afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. It is Friday, May 3rd, and you know what that means. It's time for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Jeremy Pierce. Welcome, welcome, welcome. One and all, it's a little early, but it's not a little late. Don't forget to check out the socials, Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram, and of course the 215 on Twitter. Today's show, Backlash 2024, preview predictions. Going to get this up to you, but for now, you know what's next, so just go on and hit my music. All right, so we are going to keep this simple, sweet. Backlash is, for a while now, has been the pay-per-view that takes place after um, WrestleMania. And it usually features a couple WrestleMania rematches, which I'm really not for. But they've been able to switch it up for the past couple of years. But let's take a look at last year's card, um, which was which was which was fun. And I remember it pretty, pretty vividly. So our first match on the evening from last year was Bianca Belair defending the Raw Women's Championship against Io Sky. And the reason this match stood out was because we were in Puerto Rico and Bianca Belair was getting booed. Io Sky was getting cheered. Remember, Bianca was the good guy of Rio. Io was the bad guy. And the stem from this long, boring feud with damage control. Um, and Bianca was kind of shook at that she was getting booed. I know how good EO is, but I think another reason Bianca was getting booed was she was starting to reach that, oh, LOL, John Cena super face dominance. And it was getting tiring. And when she defeated EO, she became the longest reigning Raw women's champion then we had Seth Rollins facing Omos this was the most random of matches that don't know why it happened don't know why it happened but Seth defeated Omos with three curb stomps then we had Austin Theory defending the United States Championship in a triple threat match against Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed. Now, I actually don't remember this match. This match didn't even go long. It went six minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, Austin Theory was coming out of his victory over John Cena at WrestleMania. But Austin Theory retained and and it, it's whatever. It's, it's, it's whatever. The next match was Rhea Ripley defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Zelina Vega. You can see the emotion just all over Zelina's face. This wasn't anything special. Zelina was super, super, super over. And Rhea won, cementing her dominance as the, the women's champion. Then we had Bad Bunny. Damian Priest and the San Juan Street Fight. This is the match that everybody was looking forward to, and it did not disappoint. The LW was involved. Carlito made his return. Salvio Vega was involved. The Judgment Day got involved. It was just a great match. This should have been the main event. Um, it was just awesome. It was an, it was an incredibly awesome match, an incredibly awesome affair. It was so much fun the next match after that was the bloodline team of jimmy jay and solo defeating matt riddle kevin owens and sammy Zayn. i actually don't remember this match just weird um but it was a it was a solid tag team match and the bloodline storyline continued samoan spike solo got a w riddle Put down one, two, three. The main events was Cody Rose versus Brock Lesnar, just a regular one-on-one -on -one match. Cody won the match. We just still have no idea why Brock attacked Cody. We don't know. I have no clue why Brock attacked Cody, but whatever. It was fine. Um, and they wrestled all throughout the summer. But Bad Bunny should have been the main event. It is very much that simple, but let's get into 
the 2024 card. So we have approximately five matches. I'm dumbstruck why there are so few matches. And I they would be like to do this, this less is more. No. No. Um no. Neither one of your tag team titles are on the line on this show. Neither one of your mid-card championships are on the line on this show. Um and you haven't done any other storylines like why is Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable not taking place here on this show? What what are you doing? What's what's going on? But let's 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 just dive into the show. We have a tag team match that was set up last week during the draft. We have Randy Orton and Kevin Owens taking on the Bloodline, and this stems from Solo Sokoa pretty much taking over the Bloodline, putting himself at the top. Putting himself as the, I guess, the new tribal chief without any official announcement. And he has his MFT. Still don't know what that means. Tama Tonga with him. Um, Randy's just there backing up his boy KO. And sorry to say this, y'all. Randy and KO are losing. Tama Tonga's not going to lose his first pay-per-view match. Solo's not going to lose his first match as the new head of the table i guess the new tribal chief that's not gonna happen this in my opinion probably should be a stipulation match after all the blood has been shed pretty much by ko this should be a stipulation match call it a paris brawl whatever um because backlash is taking place in uh lynn metropolis france i don't know why this is not like this should have a stipulation to it this should this should be a straight up brawl but take Tamatanga and Solo Sokoa to win next up we have the match that I am least looking forward to the Kabuki Warriors team of Asuka and Kairi Sane defending the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship against Jay Cargo and Bianca Belair and why am I not excited for this match Bianca Belair is probably one of the most pushed uh, women on the roster. She's getting the LOL Cena wins treatment. And the Kabuki Warriors are just so good to not be used, to not be treated like the phenomenal wrestlers that they are. I, I'm, I'm biased here. Jay Cargo still needs work. That's not against her. She, she's in the right company to get the work done. But she really should be at the Performance Center. She really should be in NXT. But the WWE has put themselves behind the eight ball where they have to push Jade. She has to be, um, you know, on the main roster. And this, again, is a rehash of Bianca Belair versus Damage Control where she's completely dominated them my only saving grace is Oscar and Kyrie are an actual team and they are so good and they are so much better than the other two wrestlers that they should win my head tells me that they won't win my head tells me that team black girl magic is going to win because team black girl magic won at Wrestlemania my heart says pick Oscar and Kyrie so do I go with my head or do I go with my heart? My, I gotta go. I gotta go with my head. My head says Team Black Girl Match is gonna win this match. So take Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo to win this match, and it absolutely breaks my heart. Santa. Next up, we have Bailey defending the WWE Women's Championship in a triple threat match versus Naomi and Tiffany stratton and i'm shocked for one reason that this is not a fatal forward because the matches the the i'm sorry the rosters don't lock until next week and i thought they could put nia Jax in this match just because she's been dominating and she messed up the match last week but this has the potential to be one of if not the best match on the card um bailey is riding high defeating eo sky in the best match of wrestlemania weekend uh, Naomi is back getting in that good work and Tiffany Stratton is she's a star and she's she's growing on me I can't really be 
upset. And I get it about Tiffany Stratton. I really, really, really do. This is going to be fun. Um, surprised. I think Tiffany Stratton's probably going to be the most over in this match. Uh, but she's in the ring with two veterans. She's in the ring with a ring general like Bailey. So this is going to be good. I hope it doesn't fall into the same old tired, dirty B tropes of triple threat matches of two people in the ring, one person knocked out, and we just keep on switching. But like the rest of Backlash, this is a very predictable match. Bailey is winning this match. She's not. She's not losing the championship after winning it so soon at WrestleMania. It's just. It's just not happening. Um. So take Bailey to win this match next up we have damian priest defending the world heavyweight championship against jay uso and i have thoughts about this match it's it's not gonna be a bad match i it's not gonna be a bad match i don't think it's gonna be a great match either i think it's gonna be a slow kind of plotting match it's gonna be one of those WWE matches where it picks up majorly in the end um jay uso was the overall number one pick sir in the draft by monday night raw right so he's getting a world heavyweight championship match he is main event jay uso he won himself a fatal four-way um number one contenders match due to the help of cm punk costing drew mcintyre the match now Main event, Jey Uso, I guess, has a little bit of beef with the Judgment Day. Remember when he finally moved over to Raw, they kept trying to recruit him. He was like, nah, I'm good. Again, <sighs> you know what? I'm not going to say again. I could see Damian Priest losing here. I, I really could. So soon after winning the world title at WrestleMania, the, the Judgment Day being on the outs, I could see... Damian Priest losing here. It's main event Jey Uso. Will Damian Priest lose here? Probably not. And that's what happens when you get shows like this where they are super, super predictable. My head and my heart both say Damian Priest winning this match. So I'm going to go with Damian Priest winning this match. But expect some fireworks with the Judgment Day to continue the riff because without Rhea there, not gonna it's not gonna be pretty and lastly we have the most predictable match on the card cody rose defending the undisputed wwe championship against the phenomenal a j styles this is the easiest match you could ever predict in like the history of ever cody rhodes is not losing and that sucks it, it it destroys all suspense it destroys all belief and it kind of makes the match boring when you know what the outcome is and the story here is just two men that have simple respect for each other yada 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 um and aj is just a douche now but this is going to be a fun match. It's it's not going to be a bad match. I can I can tell you that. But it's and here's the thing. It's going to get time. It'll probably go like 20 minutes, maybe even 25, because there's five matches on this card, and they're going to stretch the hell out of this show. Um, they got away with like six, seven matches on WrestleMania night two, so. We'll see, but Cody Rose is definitely winning this match, and we're going to continue the downfall of AJ Styles. Maybe rekindle this feud with LA Knight, but that is Backlash 2024. A simple show, a fine show. Um, it's whatever. It it should it should be good. It'll be it'll be fun. It's coming on at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but. It'll be cool. Uh, that's the show. What we got coming up next week? We got let's. Uh, we did that. We got what just happened. Backlash preview. We got the a list of the best backlash matches of all time. We got a let's talk about a changing the road to WrestleMania, and we've got a flashback Friday, looking back at some of the best backlash 
moments. But that is the show. I am your host, Jeremy Pierce. Don't forget to check out the socials. Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube. Charismatic underscore creations on Instagram. And of course, the 215 on Twitter. And as always, Gigi Dolan, Isla Dawn, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, Anna J.M. Bailey. Holla at your boy. Peace.